What is going on, IE Sports Radio fans? It's your boy, the Soul Cal Saint, back at it again with an all new edition of the IE Wrestling Show. It's your direct feed for all that is professional wrestling on the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports, IE Sports Radio. Please follow me on the X at IE Wrestling Show. That's IE Wrestling Show. You can also follow IE Sports Radio at IE Sports Radio. That's the hub for all of our shows on the network. Check out our website at IESportsRadio.com. If you want to get yourself some merch, join the website for totally for free. And you can blog with us. You can read um, any blog postings you would like. You can post on message boards. You can read up on your favorite hosts. Uh, get some more in-depth analysis by checking out some of our past uh, aired shows and uh, if you want to, you know, throw some shekels our way, please do. Also, if you're in the mood for being generous and charitable, please check out PlanetJerky.net, the official sponsor of IE Sports Radio, and throw some shekels their way for some delicious 100% beef brisket beef jerky. Planet Jerky, this jerky is on a whole other planet. Ooh, yeah! So... I am here back today with a new episode. We got a lot to talk about, guys. Uh, So a lot went down this weekend. A very, very amazing card took place this past Saturday, NXT No Mercy. It was like a breath of fresh air. I felt like I was watching a old... I feel... It's so weird to say old because it it literally was in the last, like, you know, within uh, a span of, like let's say five to seven years uh, of the uh, black and gold era of NXT. You know, the prime era is how people like to look at it. You know, when you had your your Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era, uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa feud, you had Aleister Black, now known as Malachi Black in AEW, um, you had Andrade El Idolo, a.k.a. Andrade now in, uh, in AEW, uh, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Roode, Glorious Bobby Roode, Finn Balor, that era, the the big uh, uh, the era that uh, a lot of fans of the NXT brand remember fondly. I felt like the NXT No Mercy pay per view this past Saturday night was a, definitely a return to form, and we'll have more on that later. Also, we're going to talk about AEW's Wrestle Dream pay per view. Really, uh, it was a so so pay per view in my opinion. But the the big story that came out of that, of course, uh, we'll get into that later um as well but i of course i have some wrestling news for you like i always do so we're going to get into that first so let's jump into some wrestling content huh let's see what's going on in the world of professional wrestling so this is a little fun little tidbit i just wanted to <laughs> i wanted to throw your way congratulations wrestling fans we did it the word kayfabe has been added to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Wrestling is officially mainstream, y'all, especially in the English language. Kayfabe, a noun, the tacit argument between professional wrestlers and their fans to pretend that overly, excuse me, overtly staged wrestling events, stories, characters, etc., are genuine. Broadly, it's a tacit agreement to behave as if something is real, sincere, or genuine when it is not. Look at that, guys. Kayfabe is now a part of... The English language. It's not just wrestling jargon anymore. The word kayfabe is now a part of the English language. Thanks to Miriam, uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. How about that? That was a fun little tidbit there, huh? So I announced this this last week on my show. Uh, I know Larry B., the head honcho of IE Sports Radio and host of 3 and Out., uh, was uh, was really excited about this news, and I just want to re- reiterate, uh, excuse me, reiterate to everyone that your boy was the one that called this first, and it was made official uh, just five days ago after my show had aired that officially announced on both the USFL and XFL official X pages and other social media platforms, including ESPN News, that the USFL and XFL announced their intention to merge. Subject to customary regulatory approvals, and if the transaction is consummated, the new league will be will establish best-in-class operations based on the most recent seasons of both leagues. This historic combination will anchor professional spring football with substantial capabilities and resources to ensure future growth and continue to enhance the development of the collective players, coaches, and staff that are coming together. 
definitely see this as a chance for uh, the NFL to actually have its own very own farm league. Uh, I feel like it's desperately needed, especially for uh, it gives. I feel like it gives a lot of players who feel like their careers uh, were over after their college years. Maybe it gives them a chance to say, "Hey, I have another chance, one last shot to probably make it to the pros, and this is my avenue to do so." It gives a lot of other guys opportunities, and I and as well as coaching, as, as you know, coaches as well. That's how I look at it. The reason why I'm talking about this on my wrestling show is because, of course, for those who are in the know, the XFL, one of the leagues that is merging with the USFL, is owned by WWE legend Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So that's why I'm, I'm mentioning it. That's why I mentioned it last week. So, uh, yeah. So the Rock, very very busy. The Rock merging with the USFL officially. Uh, that rumor has been confirmed to be true. So any more news on that, I will come across your way as soon as I uh, hear about it. But yes, the intention is there. And once we know more, uh, you'll hear it first here on the IE Wrestling Show. Let's see here. So uh, if you're a fan of the man, big time Bex, Becky Lynch, the current NXT Women's Champion, this came out about six days ago. Becky Lynch has her first ever autobiography coming out uh, this coming March, just in time for WrestleMania season. Becky Lynch's 288-page book memoir slash uh, book slash memoir, excuse me, will be released on March 26, 2024. Becky Lynch, the man, not your average average girl. By age seven, Rebecca Quinn, now known in the ring as Becky Lynch, was already defying what the world expected of her. Raised in Dublin, Ireland, in a devoutly Catholic family, Rebecca constantly invented new ways to make her mother worry. Roughhousing with the neighborhood kids, hosting secret parties while her parents were away, enrolling at a warehouse wrestling school, nearly breaking her neck and almost kneecapping a WWE star before her own wrestling career even began. And she has always, and she was always in search of a thrilling escape from the ordinary. Rebecca's deep love of wrestling as a child set her on an unlikely path. With few female wrestlers to look to for guidance, Rebecca pursued a wrestling career hoping to change the culture and move away from the antiquated disrespect so often directed at the elite female athletes that graced the ring. Even as a teenager, she knew that she would stop at nothing to earn a space among the greatest wrestlers of our time and to pay the new path for female fighters. Cold from decades of journal entries, Rebecca's memoir offers a new raw, personal, and honest depiction of the complex woman behind the character Rebecca Quinn plays on TV. That's right, guys. So I, if you're really into uh, memoirs in general, especially of sports athletes, uh, in particular wrestling memoirs, because, man, sometimes wrestling memoirs are some of the craziest things you could ever read. I have read – you name them, I've read them. I've read Chris Jericho's books. Mick Foley's are up there at the tippy top. Mick Foley's books have always been very, very uh, just funny, insightful. Uh, Mick Foley is a hell of a writer. Um, his very first uh, memoir that came out back during the Attitude Era, Have Mankind, Have a Nice Day, was a New York Times bestseller right away. It was fantastic. Just a great read. Uh, he was a huge book. I mean, it was a very large book, especially at the time at my age. Like For me to read something like that was, uh, you know, you don't you know, just see like – you know, 13, 14 year old kids reading a 500 page book <laughs> at that time. But yeah, um, the wrestling memoirs are always some of the best things that you could possibly read. Um, I highly suggest you check out if you haven't, if you're listening fans, if you're, and if you are an avid reader and love reading about, um, you know, actual people, you know, memoirs, not fiction, nonfiction. Uh, I would suggest checking out, uh, have a nice day. Uh, Foley is good is the sequel to that. Um, check out the rocks book. The rock says that was, uh, actually made while he was still an active professional wrestler in the WWE. Eddie Guerrero, God rest his soul, rest in peace to Latino heat. Eddie Guerrero. He actually, he had a memoir come out after his untimely passing. It was very good. Um, very honest, very real, uh, to be the man, Ric Flair. That's a very good one as well. And, uh, I'm definitely going to be picking up this one. Becky Lynch, the man, not your average, average girl. Uh, by Rebecca Quinn, uh, which is her real name, Becky Lynch. I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm definitely going to pick that up and, and uh, give it a go, give it a read for sure. So that comes out March 26, 2024. I don't know if it's on pre-sale yet or not. I'm sure you could probably find it on pre-sale already if you check out Amazon.com. Amazon's pretty good about having uh, pre-sales for books, uh, any type of book you're looking for really. So 
I say check it out if you're an avid reader of sports memorabilia. Or excuse me, sports memoirs uh, and a fan of professional wrestling. This is definitely going to be an interesting read for sure. All right, so let's see what else I got for you guys here. Trying to make sure I don't uh, lose anything here. All right, so this is actually some really big news. I'm really excited to announce this, especially for any of our Japanese uh, listeners that listen uh, to my show. Shout out to Yukio. Uh, I hope I man. I hope I didn't butcher your name, Yukio. I I <laughs> I humbly apologize, sir, if I uh, mispronounced your name. But shout out to you, man. You've always been a loyal fan of uh, the IE Wrestling Show. You've been a, a listener way back. Uh, during the uh, the Gorilla Position days. So I just wanted to give you a big shout-out. Thank you for always being a loyal listener to the show. Uh, it is very, very, very much appreciated. Thank you, sir. But uh, I, this is going to be some interesting news. I'm sure you'll love to hear this. WWE announced uh, today, this was actually five days ago, so excuse me for the uh, wrong, if it sounded like it came out today, but it didn't. This was about five days ago this article came out. Uh, WWE announced that it has agreed to a new media media rights partnership in Japan with Amoeba that will see WWE's programming broadcast exclusively on Amoeba platforms in Japan beginning this month, October 2023. Raw and SmackDown will both broadcast free to air in Japan every week with Japanese commentary immediately following first broadcast in the United States for the first time ever. Starting with Raw on Tuesday, October 3rd, which is today, uh, and every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. local time, and SmackDown on Saturday, October 7th, and every Saturday night at 8 p.m. local time. Both weekly shows will also be available to watch on demand. The new agreement will also see NXT available to watch on demand in Japan via Amoeba Video. Additionally, all WWE Premium Live events will air exclusively live on Amoeba, with all past editions of WrestleMania available to view on demand via Amoeba Video beginning October 1st. So it's already there. The entire library of WWE's premiere wrestling event of the year wrestlemania is now available on demand on amoeba if you live in japan so that's big news really big news uh uh, it's fantastic to see that this big agreement that they've come to to show uh to get wwe uh more eyes on the wwe product in the land of the rising sun in japan so that's really really awesome uh to hear japan especially is a uh, country that really looks at professional wrestling with the utmost respect, they treat it like it. I feel like they treat it like it should be treated here in in in, uh, in the United States, not as an afterthought, but as an exercise in athletic competition. With the utmost respect, so that's why, like, one of my dreams uh, uh, in my uh, life here, it's definitely on the bucket list for me. I have to go to Japan at some point in my life. I want to go to Japan. I want to check out all what Japan has to offer. I want to check out food. I want to check out events. I want to check out you know uh, different types of things that they, that you don't see every day in the United States that you can only buy over there in Japan. But mostly the wrestling fan of me, I want to go to Japan and just check out all sorts of Japanese professional wrestling live. That is a goal of mine, and I will make that goal happen. It's on the bucket list for sure. So. Check that out, guys. And all of that is free of charge. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to pay for that service. It's all free of charge to, to view WWE content on Amoeba. And with that said, uh, there's actually, like, a rumor going around, especially after the great Muda, WWE Hall of Famer and Japanese wrestling legend, the great Muda, was recently on WWE's... Um, a uh, little, I guess you call it like podcast slash live show that they do every week on YouTube, uh, uh, the talk. And, uh, I think that's what it's called. I can't remember at the moment. I do apologize, but great Muda was kind of insinuating that, uh, WWE and pro wrestling, Noah pro wrestling, Noah, one of the premier, uh, wrestling companies out in Japan. Uh, I would say Noah's pretty, I would say Noah's probably the number two, excuse me. Noah is probably the number two wrestling company, just behind New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, there may be some sort of agreement coming uh, very, very soon uh, between uh, some sort of working relationship between Pro Wrestling Noah 
and uh, the WWE. But take that with a grain of salt. But I mean, the man himself, the great Muda, was the one that said that. So he may be uh, more in the know than we think. So keep your eyes peeled for that, as I will. And as soon as I know something, you, my loyal listeners, will also know. And speaking of uh, working relationships, this is a big one, really, really big. I'm really excited to announce this. If you're a fan of Major League Wrestling uh, and a fan of New Japan and uh, the Lucha Libre company CMLL, it was announced the other day that MLW, CMLL, and NJPW are now working together. The three companies will work together, trading wrestlers as needed. MLW has stopped working with AAA due to political differences between them and CMLL. And this is the official announcement that was uh, uh, brought uh, that was uh, put online by MLW, Major League Wrestling, Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre. I probably butchered that. I do apologize. <laughs> and New Japan Pro Wrestling today announced the formation of a landmark strategic alliance. The three world class organizations will unite for a variety of crossover collaborations commencing this October. The Strategic Alliance creates the ultimate stage for each organization to showcase their signature fighting styles and athletes. It's a privilege and an honor to forge an alliance with CMLL and work with Mr. Salvador Lutaroff Lornele and his team while expanding MLW's relationship with New Japan to create an extraordinary collaboration, said MLW CEO and founder Court Bauer. I wish to thank Mr. Salvador Mr. Nioki, Mr. Takami, and Rocky Romero for building the foundation for this opportunity. We look forward to showcasing the extraordinary athletes from Mexico, Japan, and America for fans worldwide. Celebrating its 90th anniversary earlier this month, CMLL is recognized as the premier Lucha Libre organization in the world, introducing Lucha Libre to Mexico on September 21st, 1933. CMLL, originally known as EMLL, is a sports and cultural institution with the famous Arena Mexico, hosting some of Mexico's most iconic matches and becoming the unrivaled leader in Lucha Libre. Recognized for its rich tradition and celebrated for its unmatched excellence, CMLL is synonymous with Lucha Libre in Mexico and around the world. So that is a big get for MLW. That's really, really cool to see. So congrats to MLW, New Japan, and CMLL for coming to this some, this awesome agreement that will showcase the many talents from all three companies for the world to see. So that's really awesome. That's another big news for wrestling fans. I just love it. More content, guys. Just give it to us. Give us more wrestling. Uh, the, the more wrestling, the more premier wrestling we get, the better. This is definitely the best time to be a professional wrestling fan, I have to say. This is definitely one of the best times. I And I've lived through the Attitude Era. I uh, was too young to really remember the Golden Era. I was definitely... Uh, uh, I was right there at the New Generation Era of the WWF at the time. But, I mean, it really didn't take off for me as a fan until I became a fan during the Attitude Era. During the Monday Night Wars between WWE and WCW. And I have been a fan since then. I've been a loyal fan. I have not diverted. Trust me, there's been times where I've been very, very agitated and very angry with professional wrestling wrestling and me it's a love-hate relationship i love it and sometimes i love to hate it because, <laughs> because it, it it does it irks me sometimes but right now we are in a state of wrestling that i've you know i didn't think i would see especially not in my late 30s so this is really awesome to see And speaking about Lucha Libre, the Lucha Libre legend himself, Rey Mysterio, the current WWE United States Champion, has just been announced. He will be hosting the Billboard Latin Music Awards. Uh, it doesn't. I don't have a date for when that will be, but Rey Mysterio apparently, uh, well, not hosting. I guess they had that wrong. The translation is wrong. Rey Mysterio will be a presenter at the Latin Music uh, Billboard uh, Awards. So if you're a fan of Latin music and a fan of professional wrestling, uh, check out the Latin Music Billboard, the Billboard Latin Music Awards to see Rey Mysterio as a presenter at the Latin Music uh, Awards. Announced during NXT No Mercy this past Saturday night, it will be a two-week special starting October 24th. Following to the actual day itself, October 31st, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, 
It will be NXT Halloween Havoc, a special two-week event live on the USA Network at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time starting Tuesday, October 24th. Halloween Havoc last year was a one-week event, but now they stretch it out to two. And it's awesome because Halloween this year actually does fall on a Tuesday, which is the normal air date for NXT. So NXT Halloween Havoc will be happening for the first time ever on Halloween. So that's really cool. Also announced during uh, NXT No Mercy this past Saturday, the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament was announced, and the participants have all been revealed. The field for the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament has been revealed, featuring eight talented competitors set to compete in a tournament, which is scheduled to kick off tonight, October 3rd, the October 3rd episode of NXT. While specific brackets were not unveiled, we're not we're not unveiled during the NXT No Mercy event. The following participants have been announced: Jakara Jackson debuted. She debuted on NXT on June sixth in a women's title number one contendership battle royal. Carmen Petr- Petrukov Petr- Petrovic, excuse me, Petrovic. She is she's brand new. She's never wrestled on NXT TV as of yet. Lola Vice, the beautiful Lola Vice, a former MMA fighter, debuted on the June 6th NXT episode in that Battle Royal as well, will be entered into the contest, into the tournament. Jada Parker, another brand new face, has never been seen on NXT TV before. Izzy Dame, another brand new name, never before seen on NXT TV. Danny Palmer debuted at the NXT New Year's Evil in a women's title 20-woman Battle Royal Kalani Jordan, she also debuted in that June 6th number one contendership battle royal. And Ariana Grace, she competed in the 2022 NXT Women's Breakout Tournament, losing to Nikita Lyons in the first round. And she was sidelined for 11 months with an ACL injury, making her triumphant return. For those who are not in the know, Ariana Grace is actually the daughter of former WWE superstar, current Impact uh, Director of Authority, Santino Marella. That's right. Yes, the man that that created the finishing move, the Cobra, the former Intercontinental Champion, Santino Morella, is the father of current NXT uh, superstar Ariana Grace. The 2022 NXT Women's Breakout Tournament was won by the former NXT Champion Roxanne, uh, excuse me, Roxanne Perez, who defeated Tiffany Stratton in the finals. Who was the former NXT Champion Tiffany Stratton, of course. So big things can come from whoever wins and possibly loses this tournament. So. That's going to be a big uh, big thing to check out. The NXT Women's Breakout Tournament starts tonight on NXT. Oh, really random here. This is very, very random. Uh, especially if you don't remember who this person is. Uh, Ariana Cameron, quote-unquote, Andrew Cameron was, uh, was the name that she was known as in the WWE. She was one of the Funkadactyls. One of the uh, two uh, backup dancers to Brodus Clay, uh, a.k.a. former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Tyrus, uh, uh, along with uh, Naomi, who is the current Impact Knockout Women's Champion, Cameron, a.k.a. Ariana Andrew, apparently is set to launch her own wrestling promotion with the first show taking place later this month. The WWE alumni is launching Pound Town Wrestling. Yes, that is the name that she landed on. PTW Pound Town Wrestling. All right. <laughs> A little on the nose, but okay. With its first show taking place live October 12th in West Hollywood. That's right. It's going to be in West Hollywood. Thursday night, Pound Town Live Wrestling, October 12th. You can go to eventbrite.com and look for tickets there. They are available now. This is actually a heart. It's going to be live at the Heart Nightclub. Heart Nightclub. That is the name of where this uh, place, will, this wrestling event, will be taking place. And it is twenty-one and over show. So you have to be 21, eight, 21 years of age or older to attend this wrestling event. It's going to be at uh, if you're in the Southern California area at that time. It's going to be at eighty-nine eleven Santa Monica Boulevard, West Hollywood, California, in WeHo. That's right. Get ready for an epic show for, with Thursday Night Pound Town, where the ring will be shaking and the crowd will be roaring. Witness jaw-dropping matches, fierce rivalries, live music, great performances, and unforgettable moments that will leave you on the edge of your seat. 
From high-flying acrobatics to bone-crushing power moves, our talented wrestlers will give it their all to claim victory as they try to leave their mark on the road to becoming the first-ever Pound Town champion. Don't miss a single moment of the action-packed excitement located at the hottest venue located in the mecca of West Hollywood, the the Heart Nightclub. It's going to be an unforgettable night, so don't miss out on the hottest event in town. And tickets start at seven ninety nine. And go all the way up to $200. That's, that's damn, that's quite a steal. So you can get a ticket for 8 bucks, Or if you really want to spend some money, $200. So there you go, guys. If you're going to be in the SoCal area, especially in West Hollywood, uh, check that out. So uh, for any, uh, for any uh, Washington basketball fans, if uh, I don't know if any of you guys uh, listen to my show... Or if any of you guys are wrestling fans, but this past Sunday night at AEW's Wrestle Dream, a basketball legend was in the front row. Former Seattle Supersonic, yeah, remember that? Remember that team, guys? Yes, the Seattle Supersonics. I remember <coughs> they were around when I was a kid. The Seattle Supersonic legend himself, Sean Kemp, was live in the crowd. At AEW Wrestle Dream, they they got him on camera. Sean Kemp is a massive, massive man still to this day. It's and uh, he he uh, he's looking good for his age. So it was really cool to see Sean Kemp, the Seattle Supersonic legend himself, in the crowd at AEW Wrestle Dream. And on a sour note. Uh, here um it's a really sad note i just wanted to notate this just a uh, wwe uh being a real class act here um this was just a couple days ago we learned of the unfortunate passing of new england patriots uh legend the former tight end russ francis uh, untimely passed away i believe it was a tragic tragic plane and uh, plane crash accident uh, the New England Patriots uh, announced on their X page, we are deeply saddened by the sudden and tragic loss of former New England Patriots tight end Russ Francis. Our condolences are extended to Francis's family and friends. And WWE being the class acts that they are, WWE is saddened to learn that former NFL player and Super Bowl champion Russ Francis, a competitor in the 20-man battle royal at WrestleMania 2, has passed away. WWE extends its condolences to Francis's family, friends, and fans. What a class act by WWE to acknowledge uh, the untimely passing of Russ Francis and give their condolences to him. He was a competitor in the NFL slash WWE uh, Battle Royal that took place at WrestleMania 2. Uh, that Battle Royal also featured uh, WWE Hall of Famer on the celebrity wing side of things, uh, William the Refrigerator Perry, uh, as well. Uh, so uh, that was really a class act for WWE to acknowledge the, the the untimely passing. And here, I you know want to do the same. So rest in peace to Russ Francis, and condolences and prayers to the family of Russ Francis, family and friends of Russ Francis. Uh, here, I speak for myself here at the IE Wrestling Show and all my colleagues at IE Sports Radio. We send our condolences to the family. So I don't know if uh, fans, if you guys have been aware, but apparently there's been like some controversy, uh, according to uh, many different sources, a lot of conflicting reports of the actual attendance of the of AEW's All In in London, the uh, quote unquote record breaking crowd that they had. The reported attendance numbers for AEW All-In at Wembley Stadium in August have been a subject of discussion and scrutiny. Initially, AEW announced a paid attendance, quote-unquote, paid attendance record of 81,035 fans. However, the Brent Council, the local government authority in London, reported a turnstile count of 72,265, which was significantly lower than AEW's claimed figure. Recently... There were reports suggesting that a member of the Brent Council had sent an email stating that the attendance was actually 85,258. However, Brandon Thurston from WrestleNomics 
followed up with this council member and received confirmation that the revised number remained at 72,265. It's essential to note that attendance figures for large events, especially in the entertainment industry, can be challenging to pin down accurately. Even WWE has faced uh, discrepancies and controversies over reported attendance figures in the past. WrestleNomics attempted to reach out to AEW for clarification on their attendance figures but received no response. No surprise there. As it stands, the most widely accepted figure for the attendance at All In remains at 72,265 as reported by the Brent Council. So, for all you mouth breather, ugh, mouth breathers and fucking losers that are AEW diehards sucking at the teat of Tony Khan, ha! 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 Or, should I do, let me uh, rephrase that. That was my best uh, Nelson impression from The Simpsons. That's what you get uh, for uh, being just the most egregious and just most toxic fan base in professional wrestling today. All of this BS about AEW's coming for WWE and yada yada. Well, you have the actual local government that counted the gate. And that is the official number. They did not hit a record. The official number was 72,265. They did not set a new attendance record, as much as you want to believe it. So there you have it. I just love raining on people's parades. You can tell, can't you? All right, guys. Well, when we come back... Oh, you know, one little tidbit. Sorry, one more tidbit. So it was announced, actually, also... I should have did this when I was talking about uh, the breakout tournament and uh, the Halloween Havoc... During NXT No Mercy, it was officially announced that NXT Deadline will take place live at the Total Mortgage Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Saturday, December 9th. Tickets for NXT Deadline go on sale this Friday, October 6th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via Ticketmaster.com. Exclusive pre-sale opportunities will be available beginning tomorrow, Wednesday, October Excuse me, Wednesday, October 4th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. To learn more about registering for pre-sale opportunities, please visit WWE.com backslash NXT deadline dash pre-sale. And this will be the final premium live event of the year for the WWE. There will be no main roster pay-per-view past Survivor Series. Uh, this will be the official final event of the year. Uh, on the premium live event side of things. So NXT will actually have the final event of the year, premium live event for the WWE on December 9th with NXT deadline. So get your tickets, guys. Register if you want to get some pre-sale opportunities tomorrow. But if not, check it out when they go live this Friday on Ticketmaster.com. All right. Well, we'll be back, guys, uh, with a little. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take a quick little break, and when we come back, we're gonna discuss uh, AEW's Wrestle Dream, the big shocking debut of its newest uh, superstar, its newest rated R superstar. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And we'll talk about in depth the awesome NXT No Mercy event that took place as well this past Saturday. And we'll actually get into some WWE Fastlane news. A lot of new matches have been announced for Fastlane. And we'll get into that when we come back in just a moment. Stay tuned, guys. What's going on, football fans? This is me, your boy Larry B, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it.
What's good, everyone? It's Drewski, the host of Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. On this station, we cover everything in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area, from where we cover the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Stars, Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Wings, Texas Rangers, TCU, SMU, we cover it all right here every Wednesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you stay live with me on the Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Welcome back, guys. It's your boy, the SoCal Saint. If you're just tuning in, we were just going over some uh, wrestling news in the world of professional wrestling. There was a uh, a new uh, uh, agreement that was brought together by MLW, CMLL, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, a new working relationship. Uh, we got the NXT brand going to be debuting the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament for this year, starting tonight on NXT. We also have... Halloween Havoc announced for the later part of this month for two weeks. They've turned it into a two-week special. It will be live October 24th and then, of course, live on Halloween itself uh, the following Tuesday on the 31st. So that's a lot to check out there, guys. Uh, and uh, Again, just uh, thank you for tuning in. Please follow me on the X at IE Wrestling Show. That's at IE Wrestling Show. It's your direct feed for all that is professional wrestling. On the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports, i.e. sports radio. So let's jump into some stuff. I really, we really got to get into it here. We have uh, a lot of wrestling news, uh, well, event news to talk about. So this past Saturday, it was NXT No Mercy that was live at the Mechanics Bank Arena in Bakersfield, California, and this was definitely one of the best NXT shows. In this new era of NXT that I have seen to date. It really was. It was so, so... It was just really, really exciting. Every match just hit on another level. Every match was very entertaining. The crowd... You can tell the crowd was really into every single match that took place. It definitely had that feel of the NXT TakeOver years from back in the day. It just, uh, you know, about seven, six years ago. Uh, it, it definitely was giving me those type of feels. It was really, really... Uh, awesome to see uh, these these new NXT uh, athletes uh, on the crowd uh, and the show really really put it all out there for everyone to see. Uh, the very first match actually got the crowd really rolling. It was a very good women's match. Blair Davenport going one on one with uh, one of the uh, members of this next breakout tournament, Kilani Jordan, in an awesome one on one match that they had. Uh, it ended uh, with uh, Blair getting the victory. And then after that, Gigi Dolan showed up and started wailing on uh, Blair Davenport. She started kicking her in the face, like, over and over again. It was vicious. It was nice to see uh, this uh, vicious side of Gigi Dolan. Uh, I love just, I would love to see what, what further happens between her and Blair Davenport later down the line. And then the actual pay-per-view itself started with the first match being Baron Corbin going one-on-one with Braun Breaker. 
these two men actually had a very, very decent match. I mean, a really hard-hitting match. These two men beat the living crap out of each other. It was just big man meat slapping meat. You know, just big meaty men slapping meat. Or whatever the term is now. I don't know. But they were just beating the crap out of each other. There was a one crazy spot in this match where Baron Corbin, with the momentum of Braun Breaker, picked him up and spine-bustered him through the announce table. I was like, damn, we're already, we're already starting out. Like, the, <laughs> the table already broke in the very first match of, of the official card. Uh, it looked like Breaker was going to get the victory until uh, he was distracted uh, by... Um, oh, my God, what's his name? He was distracted by... Uh, oh, what is his damn name? Oh, my God, I can't remember. He's the manager of Von, uh, of Von Wagner. Uh, he used to be in uh, Impact Wrestling... And for some reason, I cannot remember his damn name for the life of me. I do apologize, guys. But the manager of Von Wagner, who was recently decimated by Braun Breaker, came out and distracted Braun Breaker long enough to where he was hit by the end of days. One, two, three. Baron Corbin gets the victory uh, in NXT with the end of days. And the crowd was actually eating it up. The crowd was actually pretty hot for Baron Corbin, which is really wild for me to say that. Because Baron Corbin has been one of the probably worst things about the main roster for sure. But this NXT crowd has seemed to uh, grown to love him so far. And in the second match on the card, awesome reaction. Uh, it was uh, Dragon Lee served as the special guest referee for this NXT North American Championship match. Trick Williams defeated Dirty Dominic Mysterio to win the NXT North American title. It was awesome. He was the hometown boy. Trick Williams is from Bakersfield, California. Trick Williams came out to everyone in the crowd chanting, Whoop that trick! Whoop that trick! Whoop that trick! Whoop that trick! It was awesome. It was like I was watching a, a, a live retelling of a, a, a Hustle and Flow. <laughs> but man, what an awesome uh, entrance for Trick Williams. The crowd was definitely on the side of Trick. No one wanted to see Dominic win this match. And out of nowhere, Trick gets the victory. One, two, three. Trick is the new NXT North American champion. Trick is now standing on his own. No longer affiliated with uh, Carmelo Hayes. He's his own man. And now he is his own champion. Congratulations to Trick Williams. I saw a really awesome picture after his victory of him hugging his mom after his victory. It was really cool to see that his mom and his father were in attendance to see their boy win a championship live. Very awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Next match on the card, and another really awesome tag team match, a fatal four-way tag team match for the NXT Tag Team Title. Sometimes when matches are overinflated like this, they tend to be a little messy, but I didn't see that here in this match. It was very uh, well put out, very entertaining match. The family, Tony D'Angelo and Channing Stacks Lorenzo, defeated and retained the NXT Tag Team Titles. They they won. Uh, they retained their tag team titles by defeating the Creed Brothers, Brutus and Julius. Uh, Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo and OTM Bronco Nima and Lucian Price with scripts in their corner. Very hard fought match. It looked like Tony legit injured his knee at the beginning of the match. He was trying to carry uh, Carrillo and Garza on his shoulders by himself and then his knee gave out. I legit thought he was really hurt. Uh, but I guess it was kayfabe because... Uh, ah, see what I did there? Because... Uh, 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 D'Angelo came back out and finished the match and uh, helped Stax to retain the tag team titles. Because Stax was going at it alone for quite a bit of uh, that match. Another hard-hitting match that took place. Uh, a British Rounds Rules match for the NXT Heritage Cup. Noam Dar, under shady circumstances, defeated and uh, defeated Butch to retain the NXT Heritage Cup 2-1. to uh, This was actually a really hard-fought match. They went all six rounds. But after uh, the interference of Galus, uh, that took out Butch. Noam Dar sneakily took advantage of this and retained his NXT Heritage Cup. In one of the best matches of the year. One of, if not the best match of the year. Definitely a match of the year contender for sure. Not just in WWE, but of all wrestling this year. Mainstream wrestling for sure. Ela Dragunov defeated... Carmelo Hayes to finally win the NXT Championship. In a 21-minute battle, these two men beat the living crap out of each other. This was hard-hitting. This was intense. This was just start to finish 100%. They were just going at it. Uh, I, there was uh, a lot of nasty spots in this match. I mean, these guys, 
definitely did not come out of this match the same way they went in for sure. I, I was really shocked, but I was very pleasantly surprised to see Ela get the victory after his Russian headbutt, his his, his torpedo headbutt out of the corner. He just collapsed on to uh, Carmelo from that victory or from that move. One, two, three. Ela is the new. NXT champion Carmelo getting a stand. The both men got a standing ovation for this match. The crowd was so into this match, as was I. I was at work in between calls, just like just eating it up, man. These guys really put on a clinic in wrestling. These guys are the future of professional wrestling for sure, especially Carmelo. I definitely think Carmelo is main roster ready, but we'll we will see. We will see if Carmelo shows up in the Royal Rumble. Or uh, shows up after the night after WrestleMania. We shall see. But I definitely believe Carmelo is is main roster ready for sure. And in the main event, another shocker, another fantastic match. This definitely uh, showed a different side of the beautiful Tiffany Stratton. It showed a more vicious side, which I think she definitely needed. And Becky Lynch brought it out of her. And an extreme rules match for the NXT Women's Championship main evented this pay per view. What a great match. These guys, these these two women beat the crap out of each other. Becky actually got a really nasty gash. It was really deep. She had to receive like 15 stitches because I saw a picture of it. It was gross. You could actually see the yellow fatty tissue coming out of her arm. That's how deep the gash was. But she still, like a tough SOB like she is, she continued and finished the match. And Tiffany, I believe, actually got cut open. I, I don't really remember where. I think it was like above her eyebrow or something. But she was bleeding as well. Like these two women really laid it out on the line. Um, Becky Lynch even pulled out a barbed wire wrapped baseball bat and started hitting uh, Tiffany Stratton in the hip and ass <laughs> with it. Th- these two women really laid it out on the line. And Becky Lynch was able to get the victory with a manhandle slam on a stack of chairs. One, two, three. Becky Lynch retains the NXT Women's Champion to Championship to close out the night. And for those uh, who didn't notice it, uh, she had a nice little tribute to the late, great Bray Wyatt. She had Bray uh, written on her t-shirt that she was wearing uh, during that match. So that was really cool to see. What a great match. What a great show. I was so pleasantly surprised. I definitely believe this was, this was the better of the two pay-per-views this past weekend for sure. But that's just my opinion. The second pay-per-view of this weekend, of course, was AEW Wrestle Dream, which was live at the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, Washington. It was the tribute show in honor of New Japan Pro Wrestling founder Antonio Anoki, which uh, this event took place one year on the anniversary of his death. And the event actually took a very class act. I have to give it because I don't, I don't have a very high opinion of Tony Khan. I think Tony Khan's a fucking idiot, but I will give due where it's due. He was very a cla- he was very much a class act where the, the very beginning of the show and much of the Japanese wrestling tradition whenever a wrestler pass away passes away they do a 10 bell salute at the very beginning of the show uh, and they give uh, tribute to the family of the fallen wrestler and they actually had Anoki's uh, sons out there uh, they were given a 10 bell salute um, well okay I have to backtrack that that in itself the act itself was nice. But the fact that they decided to give a, l- a little bit more cheap heat to Christian Cage during this. Now listen to this. Okay, so Christian Cage, for those who don't know, who aren't watching AEW on a regular basis, Christian Cage, this, it's becoming like a running meme out there. I don't know if anyone in, in IE Sports Radio has come across any of these memes. But uh, Christian has been uh, has been doing this... Uh, this gimmick where he goes after wrestlers that no longer have a father whose father has passed away. Uh, Nick Wayne, uh, Jack Perry, Darby Allen, uh, his uncle has passed away. Male figures in their life no longer with us. And they decided to do cheap heat for this by having, by showing during the 10 bell salute or during the, the, the tribute to Anoki, they had the nerve to cut to Christian Cage watching on a monitor in the back, smirking, looking at the sons of Anoki. Because they're aware of the memes of Christian. Like, oh, you have a dead father? All right, now here's my time to butt in. That was... that. Okay, so I, 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 I retract my statement saying what a class act by Tony Khan. Fuck him. What a fucking classless way 
to do you sh- th- that sh- you should separate the two. This is supposed to be a tribute show for Antonio Noki, but you used the opportunity during the actual tribute to him, to his sons, his actual sons, to garner some cheap heat for Christian for the main event later. I think Christian had enough heat already. He didn't need that to be shown on the television screen during the actual tribute to Anoki. That definitely in itself was classless. Fuck Tony Khan. He's a piece of shit. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. I fucking can't stand that fucking curly-haired prick. And that's a shoot. Now, let's just get into the pay-per-view. Let's just rush through this shit, because I didn't watch it. It was a garbage, garbage pay-per-view with a bunch of garbage matches put together for no fucking reason. And, of course, of course, it had an overinflated fucking pre-show, like always. For some reason, Tony Khan thought, yeah, let's have a 14-match card for with no story whatsoever for any of these matches. The first match on the card was Athena, Billy Starks, Keith Lee, and Satoshi Kojima defeating Shane Taylor Promotions, Lee Moriarty, and Shane Taylor, Diamante, and Mercedes Martinez in an eight-person mixed tag team match. And then you had in a one-on-one match, New Man versus uh, AEW, Claudio Castagnoli with John Moxley in his corner defeated NJPW's Josh Barnett. In a one-on-one match, you had Luchasaurus defeat Nick Wayne. And in another pre-show match for the six-man tag team match for the AEW World's Trios Championship, Billy Gunn and the acclaimed Anthony Bowens and Max Caster defeated and defeated TMDK, Bad Dude Tito, Shane Haste, and Mickey Nichols to retain the uh, World Trios Championship. Then we got to the main card, which started with the AEW World Champion and one half of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Titles, in a two-on-one handicap match for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Titles, MJF somehow defeated the Righteous, Dutch, and Vincent to retain the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Titles. Okay? I mean, I guess it makes your world champion look strong that he can win a one-on-two match. But then they kind of just... How does a tag team lose a tag team... Lose a match for tag team titles against a single person? Whatever. The singles match for the Ring of Honor World and Strong Openweight Championship. Eddie Kingston retained both championships against his wrestling hero, Katsuyori Shibata, in a one-on-one match. Uh, Shibata and Kingston showing uh, showing respect to each other after the match. Uh, Kingston uh, is still in his uh, first reign as Ring of Honor World Champion and his first reign as Strong Openweight Champion. A AEW TBS Championship match. Chris Statlander defeated Julie Hart to retain the title. <sighs> a four-way tag team match for the future AEW World Tag Team Championship match. The the Pussy Bunk. Oh, excuse me. The the Young Bucks. Matt and Nick Jackson uh, defeated the Lucha Brothers, the Guns, Austin and Colton, and Orange Cassidy and Hook to win a championship match at a later date. Swerve Strickland, uh, who was the hometown boy for this match, defeated Hangman Adam Page in a one-on-one match. Ricky Starks defeated Wheeler Yuta. In the quote-unquote dream match, Brian Danielson defeated Zack Sabre Jr. in a one-on-one match. I thought uh, I didn't really see this match. I never really was really... I didn't see this match really as a dream match. I'm not a big fan of Zack Sabre Jr., to be honest. I think Zack Sabre Jr. is a fucking boring wrestler. Uh, too many wrist locks, too many wrist holds. Too, you know, a lot of fans think like, "Oh, he's so great." Um, yeah, if you're into that boring style of wrestling, and then when I say that, a lot of people want to argue with me and be like, "Well, Bret Hart was like that." No, not really. I mean, Bret was a technical wrestler, the one of the best, if not the best, technical wrestler. But Bret wasn't putting people to sleep with his matches, like Zack Saber puts me to sleep, and that's my two cents on that. And then we had the Don Callis family, Kenosuke Takeshita, Will Ospreay, and Sammy Guevara defeated Chris Jericho and the Golden Elite, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi in a six-man tag team match. FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Hardwood defeated Aussie Open to retain the AEW World Tag Team titles. And in the main event, two out of three falls match for the AEW TNT title, Christian Cage defeated Darby Allin 2-1. to one. Uh, they ripped apart the ring. The ring was in tatters. You could see the plywood under the ring. Um, 
Nick Wayne, who's been with Darby Allen uh, since he debuted in uh, AEW, came out that look. He came out to look like to save uh, Darby Allen from a beatdown from Christian, and ended up turning on him. Swerve, Vince Russo, swerve, bro. Vince Russo, swerve, bro. Nick Wayne turns on, uh, on Darby Allen and aligns himself with Christian Cage, and, and it was a three on one attack, and then Sting came out. To try and save uh, Darby Allen, and then he was getting beat down. It was three on two. They were about to give a concerto to to uh, Darby Allen, and then the moment that everyone is still talking about after this weekend, you hear, you think you know him. <laughs> On this day, I see clearly and. Yes, the familiar tones of Metalingus from Alter Bridge and out running through the smoke and fog comes formerly known as Edge, the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. That is right. Edge finished up with the WWE over a month ago. His contract is done. His contract was up at midnight, October 1st. He signed on the dotted line. Edge, now known as the Rated R Superstar Adam Copeland, is now a part of AEW. He came out to save Darby Allin and Sting, fought off Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus, hitting them with spears. The crowd was going nuts. I gotta say, it was definitely pretty uh, a pretty awesome debut for Edge. Uh, good for him. I was definitely, a, I, I will say, like, I was a little like, what? What is he doing there, man? Why is he doing that? Why couldn't WWE keep him? But... You know what? Good for him. Get your money, man. You uh, for Edge. No one ever thought that he'd be able to do this again. So for him to uh, be able to do something new uh, for the first time ever, work outside of the WWE because he's been with the WWE since 1998. I remember when he debuted on Raw. That's how long I've been watching Edge wrestle. So to see him in another company is definitely odd for sure. But it's cool that he was able to keep. Uh, the the music because WWE didn't license it which is awesome for him awesome for AEW and also WWE didn't uh keep their trademark at least on the rated R superstar moniker so now that is trademarked by Edge <laughs> excuse me by Adam Copeland and AEW so now they can use the moniker uh rated R superstar Adam Copeland he can't use the name Edge because that is still a trademark of the WWE but he will be going by his real name now Adam Copeland and they already have t-shirts out, Rated R Era, and that's uh, the hence the title of my show today, the Rated R Era. And Edge, shortly after he debuted, after the media scrum, he put this out on his official X page from the desk of Adam Copeland. As some of you may know, may now know, I am no longer with the WWE. My new home is AEW. I'm excited. Whole new roster, some familiar faces that I wanted to work with again, and a whole set of first ever matches. New challenges, and if you followed my career, you know that's what I've always been driven by. But first and foremost, I want to address my 25 years with WWE. I love WWE and appreciate everything the company did for me. Always have, always will. They put me on the map, gave me amazing opportunities, and through hard work on both ends, I've been supplied with a wonderful life. Hell, WWE helped me meet the woman I'd start my family with. Sometimes relationships just grow apart, and I feel the WWE and I have just grown outgrown each other. I wanted to do more. They didn't have much more for me to do. Simple as that, and that's okay. I'll start. I'll still be watching and still be supporting all my friends there. I don't buy into this odd mentality of one company over the other. It's weird. If you took offense to that, take a walk, get some fresh air, and soak up some sunshine. It's wrestling. An amazing gig, and still, it's wrestling. Relax. It's supposed to be fun. It's just a segment of the fans, not most fans, and definitely not the performers. Within the industry, we all know the more choices is better for everyone and pushes us to all be better. As a wrestling fan, which I still am, it's exciting that there's viable companies providing wrestling on national and worldwide platforms. If you're actually a fan of wrestling and not acronyms, that should make you happy too. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. If you've appreciated my work, you can still, no matter what the initials are, you still can, no matter what the initials are, because I'll still be busting my ass every time I'm out there. This ride isn't over just yet. Just try to have fun like it should be, because trust me, I'll be having fun every time I'm out there in an AEW ring. Let's go. So I think that's very awesome for Edge to say that. It was very well said, 
And with that said, it was announced already that Adam Copeland will be making his in-ring debut for All Elite Wrestling this coming, uh, not actually this, sorry, I was off, next week. He will actually be making his in-ring debut next Wednesday night, October 10th, on AEW Dynamite, Title Tuesday in Independence, Michigan, against Luchasaurus one-on-one. So, Adam Copeland is now a part of AEW Wrestling, no longer in the WWE, uh, there are some fresh matches there for him. Uh, we'll actually get to see him go one on one probably with uh, uh, John Moxley. He's never had a chance to do that. Uh, Adam Copeland could go one on one with Kenny Omega, Hangman Page. He can go one on one with Sting, Darby Allen, uh, familiar faces like Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson. Uh, we shall see. Hopefully, Christian. And, and Edge get to do it one more time against each other and hopefully tag once again. I would love to see uh, uh, Edge and Christian go uh, go one-on-one and possibly uh, be uh, as much as I fucking hate them. I, I would love to see, uh, not the young, you know, fuck the Young Bucks. I don't want to see that. I would actually like to see Edge and Christian go two-on-two against FTR. That would be really cool to see. Um, he's, re- he's really good friends with FTR uh, outside, of, outside of wrestling. So that would be really good to see. Um, so, I mean, congrats, uh, congrats to Edge, get your money, man, uh, the overall reaction in both companies that AEW feels that this is a positive, especially after losing, uh, CM Punk and all the negative news surrounding all that, and in the WWE, uh, locker room, he's, uh, it wasn't, uh, seen as a bad thing, uh, uh, according to sources in the WWE, they look at it as like, good for him, you know, good for him. And he's always welcome back whenever he wants to come back. So the door is open for Edge to return to the WWE at some point. Uh, but right now, we are now living in the rated R era for AEW. And Adam Copeland uh, will get his start, uh, this official start, this coming Wednesday on Dynamite. So look out for that, guys. We shall see. Hopefully, Adam is booked uh, very well. Uh, I hope, I really hope that this doesn't end up like so many others. That's just my opinion. So with that, guys, I'm already over time. I do apologize. I hope I'm not cutting into anyone's time. But we will be back next week. Same SoCal Saint time. Same SoCal Saint channel. It's your boy, the SoCal Saint. This is the IE Wrestling Show. Your direct feed for all that is wrestling, professional wrestling. And on the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports, IE Sports Radio. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.